Nalulungkot ako sa laban namin sa TNC kasi hindi sila kompleto ngayon sa lineup nila. So hindi nila mabibigay yung best nila sa laban namin. Pero para sa akin, hindi namin sila maliliitin kasi sila pa rin yung nakapasok sa finals. So gagawin namin yung best namin para manalo. Those were the words of TG, the support of Minaski. Well said. When you're entering a set of matches and a set of games, mm. you always want to look at your opponent like at their best. So you come in at full force. Yeah, so, and kitang kita nga naman natin yun na talaga hindi nila minaliit ang TNC. And there, those were like two sets of really fast games. It was pre 30 minutes. But we'll see. Baka kaya pa naman ng TNC makabawi this game 3. And we'll see in this game 3. We will be your shoutcasters. My name is Vulcan. With me is Crazy Apple entering our match point actually with TNC Pro Team. I gotta say, I think. When it comes to the surprise that I've been waiting for in our game one and game two, game three will be their last chance to try and come back into our set of best of five series. Let's see, do they have something up their sleeves? Maybe a factor that we don't know just yet. Hmm. Well, they actually tried a different top laner for game two. Caroline yeah. has been subbed in our game two. Note that in our game one, it was actually Math Dead yes. playing for the first game, yeah. followed by a sub by Caroline. Yeah. And we saw there that Caroline actually did decently against Kaigu. And I'm not sure if in this coming into game three that they'll be fielding uh, Caroline again for the top lane. We'll see if they have another strat that they've been hiding just so they could get back into this game three. So to our viewers who are just joining us right now, this is game three. For games one and two, Mineski got all the games here. Now we're sitting at match point. You can see it right now in our standing. Yeah, and uh, Mineski with a really decisive lead right now with the 2-0, but historically, Mineski has been in this position before against TME last uh, last split. but Summer split, uh -huh. so during the rapid stage, yeah, during rapid the rapid stage. 17. So, Apple, I think we may expect maybe another upset, another reverse sweep. Who knows? Hmm. Well, we can, but at the same time, a uh, very conscious on Mineski eh, na they they they're still very remember. Careful. Yeah, they're very careful. They still remember na, na the first sweep na siya. So I think they're gonna be really careful this series, specifically this game three. They might not leave any openings for TNC. And we saw in our first games in game two, no openings were shown by Minaski. And just goes to show, they are really setting up their goals high, setting up for reaching for the stars. Yeah. Where at this point, I think our viewers are aware that of the new GPL format. Where Vietnam, due to astound, a very extraordinary, I mean, spectacular performance yeah. they had over the years. Yeah. They will have their own competitive region. And as for the remaining Karina regions, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and Philippines will be the one competing for the spot going to the mid-season invitation, the MSI. Yeah, and seeing these two teams na makita natin na sila it would be a big honor for them obviously to represent the Philippines in the international stage and if we see Mineski there or TNC there it would be a really good chance for us to show that the Philippines is a region that is really competitive and why do we have the 2018 Backus Pro Gaming Series to know who is the best who is the strongest in the Philippines and we'll be sending them to GPL as far Mineski looking very very strong in our match Two of our third game yeah. where we are sitting at, again, match point. Whoever secures the first three points will be winning the best of five series. Yeah, and I'm actually really excited to get into this game three. Because in a way, I actually heard someone um, I heard someone tell me that they might opt for a different roster this game three. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen. So let's get to drafting. And I'm seeing it right now. It will just be the same roster we saw in our... Game two. It'll be Caroline playing in the top lane, something in the main top laner, which was Mafde. Yeah, and first round of bans for Mineski right here. It's a Jarva. They actually have been having the same first three sets of bans from Mineski. Well, for TNC currently, they banned the uh, Ezreal, Camille, and the Skarner. And we've, we've seen Kaigo so well um, performing on this Camille. It's not a surprise for Mineski to take on this Sejuani, one of the junglers that we always said. But yeah, interesting to see a lot of bands coming from TNC. And this is going to be Burst playing the Shivana. Does not really favor the meta right now, I would say, because it's yeah. more about early pressure Sejongle. Yeah, and 
Shivana did get a slight buff. This 8.5 patch, she was nerfed in, I believe, it 8.3 or 8.4, and actually gave back some of that power back. And in the stats, I've seen that Shivana rose up again in win, win, win rates. But yeah, as you mentioned, very important in yung early game pressure. And as Chisto mentioned in game two, Mineski is one of the strongest teams in the early game, and I'm not sure if PNC can hold on for that long against this team. And as for Mineski, it'll be Axel playing in the mid lane with his Azir. And now we're seeing a very technical bot lane, a Zaya and a Rakan for a Mirmu and Orthros. Due to the small time frame they had to practice with each other, I wonder, let's observe what happens in the bot lane. But going back to the Shivana, I'm really, really curious how TNC will actually utilize this because normally we would see a, a jungler where it has early pressure. But now we're seeing for your TNC side, Caroline will be playing the Riven. Yeah, and Mejo, hold on, but I, I'm not sure kung mid or top yung Riven. There's always a chance. Hayes plays Yasuo, so he can also bring another melee assassin mid laner in the form of the Riven, but actually we're now hovering on that Aurelion Soul, and they do lock it in, so Hayes is gonna play Aurelion Soul. He has never played this chapter, this whole split. This is something that I did say I was waiting for, a yeah. surprise factor. A surprise factor for TNC Protein, and now we're seeing it here. I think this may be a chance for TNC Protein to bounce back, take away one point, and give hopes to the fans of TNC out there in the YouTube chat and Facebook chat where they have been uh, uh, not in their highest spirit, seeing how their favorite team has been performing uh, for a 2-0 against Mineski. But for the Mineski fans, I think they would see this as, an, as another challenge for their favorite team. Yeah, and it's really a big challenge. Or Ops, 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 ops. They swap nila yung top and mid. But yeah, it's gonna be a big challenge for Mineski. Showing na um, very unconventional yung picks ng Aurelion Sol and the Riven. Wait. And... Whoa. That? Is that final? It is final. It will be a top lane Aurelion Sol with Ignite. I'm picturing an unsealed spellbook. And this is the surprise that I've been waiting for. Yeah, grabe talaga ang sinultesa tayo ng TNC here. Especially that Riven mid coming from Hayes. We've seen his performances on Yasuo. And if you can uh, imitate that performance on a Riven, we just might see TNC with an early snowball against Mineski. Let's see summoners. I think sa inyo, medyo excited kayo ba tingin yung top lane Aurelian Soul at si mid lane Riven ni Hayes. So... Who do you think is going to win this game? Three, it's up to you guys to root for your favorite team. Hashtag TNC win or hashtag Mineski win. Yeah, and sobrang unconventional nito Aurelion so top. Nakikita ko ngayon yung uh, rational kung bakit ito yung pinili. Because it's going to be against an Orn, which is a melee matchup. Uh, Aurelion so could probably bully this Orn, but at the same time, medyo talagang unconventional hindi ko hindi ko ma-imagine ko ano kakalabasan kasi alam natin kay sa or may medyo slight nerf dun si yung audacious yung A niya yeah. yung collision damage has been the collision bonus damage has been removed so when it comes to fighting against an Aurelian Soul it's all about going in and seizing the Aurelian Soul and I think or has the kit to make it happen plus the forge cut yeah. but it all comes down to Execution. Summoners, this is our match point. Game 3. If Mineski takes it away, they will be representing us in the GPL. But for TNC, they will try to upset this game. Let's see it on the rift. Let's hear it guys, again, this is a very important game for TNC and Mineski. The slot for GPL is at stake here. And so far for TNC, what a surprising pick. Yeah, and talagang lahat ng chista ng TNC nilabas nila dito sa game team nito to try and start a possible reverse sweep against Mineski. Anyway, this takes me back. This takes me really back to TNC's group stage. It's where I love how them as a team, they play as buddies' buddies. They're very close mm -hmm. and they know how each other plays. So you could say they're playing like this is like they're ranked solo or they're ranked. But that's the beauty of it. They're so comfortable with each other that they're aware of their own abilities. But now we're seeing right now a Riven mid against Anazir. How does that pan out? 
Hmm, well, Azir is a really good lane bully in the mid lane. Kahit kalaban niya, oh wait, actually Aurelian Soul is in the mid lane, so Caroline and Haze might also have a role swap between the two. So, if it's gonna be um, Aurelian Soul and Azir, lang. I remember Aurelian Soul doing well against Azir's in the mid lane in, the, in around Season 7. <laughs> Okay, I think I know what TNC did here. Very clever. Yeah. They are very clever to actually utilize this type of strat. In a way, know that in the... Well, I won't go too technical there, but in the end, this is clever for TNC, what they're doing right now. Putting Caroline in the uh, mid lane, because I think we got a bit bamboozled there during the player cards. Normally, we would expect that that's the thing, right? But yeah. in the end for TNC, they would just twist things around. Yeah, the extra surprise factor against Mineski. If... TNC can pull this off, uh, yung surprise factor against Mineski, it might put them off kilter and give them more openings to get a lead in this game. So, for TNC, running this top, <laughs> top <laughs> right now mid, Laurel and Soul against the Azir, will be waiting out for, let's say, the mana items, because I think for Aurelian Soul, that kind of benefits in there. Looks like aggression coming in from TG with the Leona, and then re-engaged by Orthrus, goes back to Mermo. So a trade-off in the bot lane. Yeah, and it looks like the Mineski bot lane won that trade. Because it's really the chunk of Mirmo at that point. Clever of TNC to go for that lane swap because ineffectively you you normally think that the Aurelian Soul would go top because it's on Caroline. But this can actually work because it is a technically a lane swap. Yeah, and actually that's why I thought about it when I saw the keystones and actually Caroline is bringing that electrocute. When I oh. saw that, I was like, oh, it wasn't an unsealed spellbook to get that TP if ever he needed it. So far, looks like Caroline will be going for more burst damage instead of, let's say, mobility. But it's an Aurelian so that lane swap to the mid lane. So expect a roam there from the follow four. That's going to be TG going in. Ignite is onto Mirmur. Force to flash away. Heal is there. Last tick hit for the Ignite oh. and the Peacemaker for the first blood. Yeah, TG right there. Pangalawang beses na niya na nahuli si Mirmo in that exact spot. It was like deja vu. But TG knowing that the range on that Leona so well gets that kill. And now for Burst, he's standing on a war. And for any pressure they can do, I don't think for Burst he can do much at this point. Seeing how Mirmo is not there. Ashibana is best in the jungle just farming things out. That's why I think for June, he has a lot of control when it comes to going for the side lanes. And for ganks, look at that. Already spotting out to see Burst through the jungle that you can see in the blue side with the plant. I think for Jun, he's trying his best to give information to Mineski. Yeah, and that's information that would really help Mineski. Specifically, lahat sila kasi ngayon nagsha shove the lanes. Look at the top lane, look at the bot lane. They're all at the front of the tower of TNC. While Exo is trying also to shove this lane against Caroline. And for the Orient Soul, does have a wave here. Yeah, and Aurelian Soul does have some wave there, but at the same time, we can see that medyo lamang sa CS ngayon si Exo slight lang but he still has a big wave which will crash into the mid lane turret of Caroline. So for Hayes now swapping to the top lane against an Ord, actually it's a difficult matchup because ah not anymore because yung sa unstoppable guy or nawala na siya sa W. Yeah. So in a way. It's easier for C. Hayes to trade up against the Orn because if the Orn gets displaced, may not get the final pick of the Bellow Spread, give the Brittle status. Yeah, but Orn still has a lot of damage for uh, for a tank, especially in the early game. So, we can see that it's a bit hard si Hayes. But in terms of the mid-game scaling and the items that he has in I think it would come to a point that Hayes will have enough damage to threaten Kaibu and probably kill him. Mm -hmm. We'll see it all when it comes down to point. But the first blood, know that the first blood went to Gary on this K game. We know that, I think we did say mention in our first game, where Desire is more of a fav uh, safe pick yeah. in the ADC. Mm -hmm. Pair it up with Rakan, you get a unique passive. That can be easily abused by ooh, TNC. Ooh, TNC going for a bottling gank right Caroline now. goes in for the surprise gank, gets CC locked there, but the star will land the stun Oh, to Gary, gets down to the air and pinned to the wall. Wow, TNC right there with a really good and really creative way to gank Gary, caught him off guard and got the kill back in this bottling. 
Okay. Medyo kinabahan yung ating fans ng Minas because we're seeing TNC. A different dynamic where we saw in our first two games. Could this be maybe the start for TNC to wrap things up? Possibly let them take away one point from Mineski? Hmm, if they can take that one point, they can take back probably the momentum and go on, but we'll have to see that. Oh, this, this game could be up. a pincer attack. The divide does not connect, but the Forge Guard will set things up. No! Look at the movement from Orthrush to deny the engage coming from the R. Right now, Jun, very low on health. The stars doing the work there. And for Exo, it's now out of mana. Forced to flash away. Kaigo goes in for the front line with a battle spread. But you see, you can see that Team Mermo is being pinned down by the members of Mineski. No one can help him out here because they're low. Look at Kaigo flashing in for the collision knockoff. Giving him that sweet double. Yeah, it's a two for one exchange in favor of Mineski and also Kaigo getting that double kill, which would really help him stay in the top lane for a lot longer against his. Mm -hmm. Great initiation from TNC, but for, but for Mineski, they had better engage because yes. they had the Orn, they had the CC. And when it comes to an Aurelian soul, Note that when Aurelian so, uh, suffers, let's say, a hard CC like the Leona Zenith Blade or the Stun or from the knockoff of the Orn, the stars will retract. Yeah, and Medrin Linga na maximize yung damage coming from the Aurelian Soul right there because Nikita mo din na Mineski was trying to kite out that fight, waiting for, for Jun to go around near that blue buff so that he could flank TNC from the back. And that's how they won that, that fight and got that 2 for 1. I mean, in a way, Orn becomes this... Orn, in a way, was the stack what we ridiculous amount of damage yeah. that was been nerfed. Now or is uh, more on pure raw CC. Yeah. A lot of CC that can be dealt with and that's what Mineski needs to control Aurelian Soul. Not just Aurelian Soul but also Saya. Yeah and kidding nga sinasabi natin kanina na Saya is more of this um, safe pick but she's only safe when she reaches level 6. Because when she gets the ultimate, she has the invincibility frame na hindi siya mas CC and hindi siya damage, which makes her a pretty safe ADC. But at the same time, I love that Mineski prioritized the Caitlyn pin because Caitlyn right now in this patch is one of the more dominant lane bullies and it really helps Mineski's style of, of how they always want to shove all the lanes and have really good early game pressure. Not just a bully but also an oppressor because you can also zone out the members of TNC with the traps. Yeah. And in a way, it makes it easier for Gary to free hit the turret. That's what Caitlyn excels at the most. But for the Zaya, more on shredding the lines because the Zaya can stack up the feathers, recall it for a huge burst of damage. Things right now looking pretty balanced for TNC and Minasuki's side. Can this new dynamic make shift uh, things to TNC's favor? Hmm. Well, currently... All order, but we'll have to see. Yeah. yeah. Currently, in, the, in terms of the CS, only Mirma is the one who's falling behind for TNC side. Oh, 20. Yeah, and earlier, Mejo nagpo fall behind the si Taraline. But probably, isa sa comfort picks niya tong uh, Aurelian Soul. So, nahita mo talaga dun na he's keeping up in form. And TNC might be in a better position to win this game. And it's TNC in a better position to start this Ocean Drake for the second time. Look Ooh. at the three man solo player stun! DG tries to sew things out. Burst with the Dragon Form goes away from the fight. Prison gets blocked by Orcos. The heal won't save him and divides and straight into the trap. No, Mirmu manages to dodge it with the Feather Storm, but in the end, in the end, a shutdown goes to Gary. Yeah, it was a 2 for 0 oh, exchange in favor of Mineski. And ang ganda ng call down ng Mineski, especially that wall. Wow! Talagang pagtulak, sumakto si Mirma on one of the Caitlyn traps that Gary planted earlier. And yeah, Mineski right there, catching TNC out of position, capitalizing and getting two kills. That is another two kills that we did see Deja Vu in our first game. Mm -hmm. I mean, game one and two, we saw how TNC was struggling. First game was the Math Dead. And now we're seeing Caroline in our game two with this game plan. A bit didn't really behind and see us in that game. But let's have a breakdown of the replay. Why did TNC start this ocean? 
hmm, I think TNC was thinking that they could get that ocean for free, but TG, it was only TG and EXO and Gary seen in the map at that time. They didn't really respect where Jun might be, and Jun with a really good ult. We've seen Jun in game one hit these Zedwani ult so well, and Mirmo right here just getting caught up, tried to flash out and snare everyone, but the uh, ultimate coming from that Caitlyn just secured the kill for Mineski. Another double kill from Gary in the bot lane. We saw it in game two, now we're getting game three. We saw, we're seeing a synergy of Mineski here because we saw Axel and we saw Gary's cleverly placed Wraps to block or thrusts as escape. Yeah. In the end, Mirma caught one of the traps when he was being spit there. That's why we saw for the last trap was not blocked because he was already trapped there. Yeah. And the feather storm, great. Uh, at least it was a chance for Mirma to bounce back there. If it wasn't for the ace in the hole, Mirma would have survived. Yeah. And in a way, it was also. Oh, there's gonna be a fight. What an aggressive initiation from Orthros, but Exo will disengage with the divide. Yeah, that was pretty good. And now so. Mineski will re engage with the Forge God. Two man Forge God, everyone. Did you see the engage from Mineski? Plus Kaigo with a knock up on to Caroline. Yeah, and Mineski with a really good answer to that gank in the mid lane. And I'm not sure if Caroline can run away, but Mineski looks like they're backing off right now and just going back to their lanes. Oh, there's a stun. So I think for Caroline, we'll go back to lane and safely. Under the tower, a lane swap has happened here again, guys. For Minaski, they will send Gary to the top lane to face up against Hey. Yeah, and Gary right now is pretty strong. He has that static shift that we have sword, and he's currently 3 1. You, you don't really expect a Caitlyn to be split pushing. You would usually see a Caitlyn sieging in the mid lane along with her support, but right now, Gary is just too strong that she can, uh, Gary, he can just keep pushing that top lane. And for Gary, having ru rushing that static ship, you know his game plan. He's just going for push. He's not going for damage, but more on push. And now for Mineski, they're buying some time and making some room in the red side. Yeah, and Mineski right here challenging this red buff. I oh, nice. Juan gets that with the smite. And Mineski right now trying to choke TNC with the early game pressure that they have. And also getting this top lane turret. So far, it's in a way, Mirmer's one. And three and oh, we're seeing Hayes picking up the Hex Drinker. And now we may expect the Roa coming in from Caroline. But will he have enough time to stack things up? Will he have the time to come back to this game? Knowing that Mineski, again, I saw said from our previous games that they have a really strong early game. Hmm. Well, right now, Mineski is thinking of Snowball falling their early game lead by getting this hit and probably pushing a tower down. And I'm not sure if how TNC would try and get back at this game. From what from their comp, I think they would try to go for a lot of pickoffs, specifically using Arthros and Haze together and try to get some of the split pushers from Mineski. But at the same time, it's gonna be the split pushers is gonna be Taigo's really tanky at the moment. And Orn has a natural wave here with the Q, then the uh, what's this? W. Caroline waiting in the brush. Mm -hmm. We're seeing Exam a control ward. Here comes the teleport. Yeah, the teleport coming from Haze. And he's coming in here. Fox, the last exile. Uh, that's going to be the ultimate coming in from Hayes. Low on health. Where's the execution damage? Is he going to die? Yes, he will. To Hayes. Yeah, and as I said, they need to get these pickups on the split pressure. But at the same time, it's opening up the map for Mineski to, to put more pressure on the other side of the map. Uh, I'm not sure where. I thought they were going to summon the Rift Red at the moment, but they backed off on that like, idea. They know the three members were invested in the bot lane, so they're sticking it. They're still holding on to it, but we're seeing right now, if you look at the item slots, you can see it's quarter down to its timer during its half duration. So let's see when will Mineski use it, because the Baron Ball is not yet live. It's still quite far, but know that the Infernal Drake is live in 1 minute and 10 seconds. Maybe they'll use it then. Yeah, and I think... We've seen Mineski not really prioritizing the Dragons from Game 1 and Game 2. They've been mostly prioritizing getting this objective. Again, Orthros with the aggressive engage and Exo immediately denying the engage with his Divide. And now we're seeing Juke 
buying some time, making some room for Axel. We're seeing Arthur knocks it off to there, picks up the kill, but leaving behind Burst. He's low on health, but look at the stun. Trying to buy Ty in the end, June manages to take down Burst. So we did see the Solar Flare go off by TG. Another ultimate burn by Mineski. Yeah, and it's a 2 for one exchange in favor of TNC. But Caroline, is he wise to challenge? Gary pops the ignite early, gets the stun connected. He does have the force of light, and then he retracts the stars. And in the end, Caroline does not need to use the ultimate. Will rely on Orthros. Yeah, and you can see right here, Mineski is kind of overextending in the silence and over chasing a kill in that mid lane. It, these are some of the minor mistakes that we were waiting for Mineski to make so that it would be the openings for TNC. And TNC is capitalizing on these mistakes so well. Mm -hmm. We can see it right now with the kill score of 7 to 6. The Infernal Drake is live right now. If you look at the minimap, we're seeing a lot of movements in the Infernal Drake area. And as for Mineski, they have other plans. They're just trying to buy time, but in the end, another sneaky attempt by TNC. Yeah, it's foil. Yeah, it didn't pan Not out. Not gonna stop. Way. The passive from the Shibata will be more than enough for them to secure the Inferno. Yeah, that was a good take from TNC. It was pretty risky. I thought Mineski would try to challenge that, but they opted out of it. I think because some of their ultimates were on cooldown, and they might just try to get this mid lane turret with the siege coming from the Rift Herald and the Caitlyn. And that will be Axel with the Sun Disc. With summon his turret there. Harold making its way into the mid lane. Look at the trap's place. Looks like TNC cannot do anything to stop the push. They can only try to take down the Harold. Yeah, and that was pretty clean coming from Mineski. A pretty good macro play. They would usually trade dragons for turrets and the Rift Herald because they're such a good early game team that they want to snowball early, get that early gold so they can keep on pressuring the uh, side of the uh, TNC side of the map. But you see TNC, they're not backing out here. They're trying to go in for a really hard engage. They have the Rakan and the Shivana. But do they have the damage and the items to survive the burst coming from... Yep, they will just go for it. They will let the execution come into play. Look at the divide. Immediately zoning out the four members of TNC. They're clumped up. They're at the brush side. And you see how Gary putting up those traps to stop their engage. Goes ahead, goes in with a flash. Gets the kill onto Exo with the ultimate there. And that's going to be a trap being placed in again to zone out the members of TNC. Tiger coming in. Does not have the Forge Gods. Mermu kind of slowed by the Bellow Spread. Still won't be taken down here. The Baron is live in, will be live in 1 minute and 10 seconds. I thought that was a really close call for Mineski there. Yeah, I thought at one point Exo was gonna live, but that was a great Emperor's Divide coming from Exo. But it wasn't enough. TNC kept chasing for that kill and they did it and they got it in the end. Mm, so, Apple, we're gonna see the Baron being live in uh, less than a minute. So, can Minasuke take this away freely? I don't think so because if you look at the kill score and if you look at the items, we're seeing like a Dust Blade C Haze. So classic Rivenville we see yeah. where it, it's all about killing the enemy as soon as you can. More on hide and seek game for Haze. Yeah, and Major Megita did not the team effect of these very unconventional picks coming from TNC. Mejo Mineski is trying to go for all these plays, going for these picks. Pero dahil very unconventional in comp ng TNC, they might not have been expecting a lot of how the fights went. But at the same time, yung kita din natin yung adjustment ng TNC. They weren't as proactive in the first few games. But probably specifically kasi talagang mag malakas yung pressure ng Mineski on the map. But with champions like uh, Aurelion Sol, the Riven, who have really good mid-game power spikes, that they take advantage of the power spikes of those champions, and they're the ones who's doing a lot of proactive plays around the map. And they're doing a lot of uh, control in the Baron Pit area. You saw three traps being placed in the only entrance of the red side they have. Otherwise, they would go for a huge turnaround. But now we're seeing uh, TNC. Not having that much vision, they won't really gamble in there, so they instead want to at least control some of the red side jungle. Mm, and I think Mineski was looking more for a Baron bait right there, but very disciplined on TNC. Alam nilang hindi basa basa ko kung nilang Mineski yung Baron, because at this point it's very risky for Mineski. Kasi grabe din yung engage potential from TNC, specifically yun na the Rakan uh, has a pretty strong engage. Even the, the Shivana when she jumps in, 
is also pretty good as 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 well that already on salt and that riven medyo mahirap ang mineski if they go inside that pit because of all of the aoe damage and the aggressive engage galing kay orcus with the rakan but they will try to single out see caroline look at the huge cc lock cannot do anything Burst is trying to do something here with Orthros, but in the end, that was a pickup that Mineski needed to start the Baron. And right now, Sigari oh. with... Oh, oh snap! Did you look. see the maximum range knockup coming from the Forge Gods by Kaigo? Wow, Gabion. I thought Kaigo was actually gonna throw that ultimate towards Burst, but... Nakol ka agad ni Gary na nandito si Mirmo, nandito yung Saya. Let's pick her out first. And that they did. And now Mineski is gonna secure this Baron. What? That was such a beautiful turnaround by Mineski, especially Kaigo to redirect the Forger. Gets the, gets the slow yeah. first, but who's aiming for the knockout of this? Teleport. What's he doing here? Trying to buy some time here, trying to deny the Baron, but in the end, will just be eaten up by Mineski. Yeah, this is the second time that I've been baited by a TP coming from a support, but that unsealed spellbook from Orthros right there, trying to get ah, that Baron. So if you look at the summoner spell of Orthros, I see a smite. I don't know. So he changed, he used two tokens from the unsealed spellbook, went for that TP and that smite to try to steal that Baron. Sayang, hindi niya nakuha. Uh, Great attempt though by Orthros, trying to show all the fans of TNC out there that they are not giving up just yet. So, hope is still on the side for TNC. They can still try to take away one point. It's not yet over. Because you saw Kai Orthros, the thing in your, you can see in the summoner spell, teleport and smite. That would be the last attempt that TNC would want to do, especially si Orthros. Mm -hmm. It's TNC, but it's a pretty heavy gamble from Orthos kasi nawalan tuloy siya ng flash and probably the exhaust or the ignite which could be pretty helpful in these team fights and now we see now Mineski getting this inhibitor turret he, he was trying to do everything he can he was yeah. willing to risk that much yeah. so that Mineski won't get the Baron but only end comes down to this Pinsir attack with a beautiful engage the present does not connect to any members of TNC they are at an advantage here they will be the ones to go with and bring the pain to Mineski! Wow, that was a great engage coming in from Orthos and from the whole team of TNC right there, wiping out Mineski in front of their base, getting the perfect ace. Puso lang apple for TNC here because kill score is 12 to 11. They fought back the Baron push, removing four members. And while we're gonna get to see this replay right here, lahat ng pwedeng mangyaring tama, nangyari ng tama for TNC. They landed every CC, every AOE that they could, and they're talagang nakikita mo dito pumupuso pa ang TNC. They haven't given up yet. They want to represent the Philippines in the GPL. I mean, know that with Caroline on his Aurelian soul, he has a lot of AOE damage. Not just the damage, but the slow. The slow is enough for to help his teammates catch things for, let's say, si Mermo or yeah. si Hayes. Because he Rylas Crystal Scepter si Caroline yeah. at the Rod of the Ages. And that's just two items. And he dealt that much damage. Wait till he gets six items. But Lumineski, wait for that to happen because si Kaigu, I think he's the only one with the Baron buff. Yes, he's the only one there, so he will be using him to push the mid lane. Hmm, and grabe yung fight talaga na yun. It was pretty amazing from TNC, but Mineski still has the lead. They still have a pretty good chance of getting this inhibitor turret. Wait a minute, it's dark. And it's surprise again from the Fog of War! Again with the Antic, with the pick up there! Look at the members getting shredded by the Zaya! Mermo is there, but in the end, it'll be Caroline with the slow, with the starch re engaging now onto Exo. There is the divide. Exo is forced to use his flash. I'm having deja vu right now. I remember from the summer split in Rampage. Mineski also had a big lead in Game 3 against TME and a couple of fights that turned it around for TME was what won them that game and right now Mineski is doing the same thing. So a breakdown, if you will. Yeah, the <laughs> replay right here. It's it beautiful in the end, man. Yeah, it was pretty beautiful that it was deja vu again. Nasalap na naman ng inhibitor ang Mineski. They overcommitted for that inhibitor. Pero ang ganda ng invasion TNC. Naisip ka agad nila, oh, Mineski is gonna go for this inhibitor. Let's prep. And Mineski, instead of doing a more calculated, a really safe approach, 
um, putting down wards at every flank. They didn't. They went in rough in believing that they still have that lead. But TNC had other opinions on that matter. Ito yun na hala ko kaysa from kanina. Yung surprise factor ng TNC mm -hmm. kasi they surprised us during the promotions and relegation. And now they were the first seed, got knocked down by Mineski to second. Now it's the finals natin. We're seeing yung major deja vu natin in a way that, again, which is nakula tayo dun sa Aurelian Soul at yung Driven. Yeah. Kala natin yung Aurelian sa mag top, pero hindi. Nak mid lane si Caroline at si Haze pumunta siya sa top lane. And now, dun sa clash sa mid lane, kahit may banner above yung Mineski, hindi na tako yung PNC, mag engage sa kanila and remove four members. Yeah, and yung nga yung surprise factor na yun. Coming from TNC, because very unconventional din yung comp nila. So hindi mo kaagad na expect yung strength ng comp. Pero hindi lang yun eh. Pati yung proactiveness of Orthos. I think Orthos was the one who kept keeps carrying TNC in this game. Specifically, the first try at the barrel he failed, but he he kept trying with that engage in the mid lane. Tapos he succeeded. He tried it again. He succeeded. Succeeded again. And now I think the gold lead is around 10k earlier. Now it's around 3,000. Feeling ko na sa chat natin dun sa YouTube or sa Facebook. Nito nakulad yung mga fans ng TNC. And now, first, Muntik na siya nag ult away. But here it comes. Another engage in the red side. Look at Hayes going for the flag with the ribbon ultimate. Oh, did you see the four man stun? Did you see the damage done by Caroline? He's focusing on Gary. Will the stun connect? It doesn't, but he doesn't care. He has a lot of damage on his array and soul. But in the end, Gary manages to get away from that fight. And now see Hayes. Vision Hanapan Shasi Gary's a dread side jungle. But in the end, they will be happy for an equal trade of two for two. But June is gone. Exo is nowhere to be seen. That's a jungler in the mid lane for Mineski. But as the TNC, now we're going see Caroline, aka top, but he's not like top, but yeah. lane swap, yeah. but also see Ortho, the main engaged tools of TNC. Yeah, and replay right here. Burst actually almost got caught out. But he's got ult again. He's unstoppable siya while using that ult. So he's not affected by wall coming from the Azir. And you'd think right here that TNC might be in a bit of a pickle. But he's with that flak. The burst down is again si Exo, which Salvage the well, not really salvage, won them that fight. And Gary right here, just with a beautiful fighting, takes down takes down Caroline and Mines Creator will just back off. And it was a two for two. Ang sayang talaga yung stun ni Caroline. If that had landed to Gary or Exo, that would have been so good for TNC. Yeah. But on note, guys, I think in natin sa mga items ni Caroline. Meron siyang Rylai's, Roa, at yung bagong Leandre Storm it, where as the fight progresses, the longer the fight goes, ramp up damage po yun. So for Caroline, he is dealing a lot of damage. And Hayes, ang linis yung nalo. Walang siyang deaths sa Game 3 natin. But this will be the real test. Apple. Yeah, and mentioning the that Baron is live. Yeah, and also mentioning that Leandre is a pretty good item on Aurelion Soul because the lack of Aurelion Soul is the sustained damage mm. and the ramp up is up to 10% Ah, Burst, be careful, don't get mm. baited by the Fog of War, it's really black so there will be the control war being placed there Oh, will Burst make forward? You know, this is very careful, they have to be very careful because if they get wiped out here the hope of TNC is not so we're seeing three members in the brush side, very very careful Oh, the Baron and they fell fast. for the trap. That'll be burst going away. But India Mineski with the Baron bomb in their hands. Will they take away surviving here? But Caroline with their insult. Ooh, the mind games really Squadra? went to TNC. This is a wrap up. This is going to be the Pentagon. Whoa, guy right there just popped off. And it was a really good Baron bait. Coming from Mineski, they cleared all the vision from TNC and baited them into that pit. And Gary finishing off with a pentakill. I gotta say, Crazy Apple, when it came to the point for TNC, and signing talaga yung mga chances ng TNC because they have what it takes to dance back in that game, but the lack of vision, the nerves settling in the best of five series, they didn't wanna take chances. But that one. Babe, the mind games of Mineski work to their favor. Yeah, and Mineski right here is looking to finish the game. I'm not sure if the dead timers are enough for them to finish. Hey, okay, so we'll be live in three seconds. That's Nexus Third One. Okay, guys, the, the back of Mineski, they will not risk it anymore because if they get a steer, also, they lose the Baron buff. It's safer to go for the reset here and for TNC. 
they have a second chance. Yeah, and let's keep playing it safe. Baka medyo na deja vu din sila from Game 3 during the summer split. Pero at the same time, nakuha nila yung battle na yun and that pentacle which is really really important to break the, any momentum that TNC was was building up to that point. But at the same time, nakikita natin kanina na TNC has really good team fighting, has a lot of damage. So it's not far that TNC can win. Has a lot of aggressive engagement here. Looks like Burst closing the gap with the W will uh -huh. not come in. Looks like for TNC, they will just back out here. But what happened here? The Baron overstepping. Walang vision. Yeah, and tumama lahat ng big CC ng Mineski. The um the Orn hit three targets as well as TG on that Leona hit also stunned three targets. So naging field day for Gary just to have that free hitting potential and Gary flashing and getting that pentakill and yung nangyaya talaga dun um, Mineski tinanggal nila yung vision on that Baron buff and ang binsa na natapos because they have this really fed Caitlyn and also the um the Azir which just burns to the Baron really fast so nung immediately na natapos nila alam nilang parating yung TNC so they immediately turned and g went for the inhibitor and one Nexus turn so, maybe you can your mom fans of TNC because they have what it takes to come bounce back here. But will they overcome this challenge? Don't lose heart just yet. You saw how much effort the team is doing here to try and fight back Mineski. But the Baron Pop is just too hot for them to handle. That will be inhibitor turret down. That is the second inhibitor removed from the base. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Okay, TNC is. They, they might just opt to defend for their top side, and Mineski right now is backing the column. They might just buy some more items and ang bilis ng items nito ni Gary, he almost has a full items, he just needs to upgrade that last one. Hindi pa tapas yung laro so for TNC, just defending the ways here, but for Mineski, they know their mistakes in game 1 and 2, they are quickly adapting, they do not want to go for those missing cages and they do not want a repeat of what happened in the Summer 2017 uh, Summer Split Finals, where Complacency cannot go well for any team, and this is what I love, um, love about Mineski, where they learn their lesson and see how they still, as TG said in the interview, treated as their equals and still being very careful. Yeah, and right now Mineski is looking to take down the final inhibitor third from TNC. And I got to say, Mineski has a really strong siege. Kahit wala sila nitong Baron buff, kasi Kipling has a really long, a long range. And mahihil na pa ng TNC to get the flank. Oh, Mirma with a nice dodge! Oh, ho, ho. Pinabahan ko dyan ha. Look at Mirma with the decisive feather star. Without any more escape, they need to fight here. Look at the members of TNC collapsing there. Force cut! Oh, everyone is clumped up! This is very dangerous for Minaski. They have to run for the hills. But will Mirma let that happen? Now we are seeing the ace! Wow, that was a great ace! Coming from TNC, and it all started with Jun missing his ultimate because Mirma at the clutch moment was able to use his ultimate to dodge the Sejuani ultimate, and we get a triple kill a code right there. And wow, TNC. They can still win this game. I mean, now we're talking about see Caroline getting the two NLR. <laughs> we'll go for the death cap. So, but in the end, Tunsa Clash not in the top lane. Now we'll have Nexus turret. Galing kay TNC's base, so yeah. in the end, at least naka ace din sila, naka pera din sila para magbili ng mga items pero tingnan natin po sa replay dun sa top lane. Yeah, ito si Mimo, ang ganda ang clutch Galing. swab na nung ultimate na niya na yun. Nabuhay siya doon and Mineski knowing na walang ultimate si Mirma, they try to go for the tower dive, they try to go for the all-in. Pero TNC also ah, knew that. that and they were in the proper proper places to go for that engage, yun dapat, yun ang susi ng panalo ng TNC in the, pa, in the other two fights that they won, they came in from different angles para hindi sila masingle lock CC ng Mineski. Lahat sila nag-deal damage at different at different times. So, so because of that, Min, uh, Mineski got melted by TNC and which gave them that win. As for dun sa clash natin, that was the replay and I gotta say, the two dragons, the two dragons, mm. the <laughs> fog of war going straight into the top lane. What a collapse by TNC. Yeah, and that is a pretty decisive collapse as well. You can see that even 
this team, tatlo lang sa kanila yung madalas na nakikita natin during the group stages and the semifinals. Andoon pa rin yung chemistry nila, nandoon pa rin yung synergy nila na when one person shot calls go in, they all go in and that's how they win these fights. And that was the mentality that we talked about during the group stages. It's great to see that for TNC, a solid team despite the sudden change in roster. But not right now, sa tanong ng mga fans, what will be next here? Don't lose hope because you're seeing TNC fighting to their hearts content, they're trying their best here. Yeah, and uh, right now, dito, si Mineski, will they go for the collapse here? Will they go for the engage? The prison does not connect. This could be a go signal for TNC, but see Hayes, mentioned na overstep yung boundaries niya, he got so much damage, chunked up to itself. I was thinking that Mineski, baka kinakabahan sila doon, kasi dito din sila sa position na to, lost two fights in a row, but they're still going for this inhibitor. Tignan natin si Orthros with it and engage again. Si Axel like Divide, do the Emperor's Divide. Look at TNC will be again mowing them down. You're seeing that the Guardian is being proctored, but under the tower, they're not Three. respecting the tower. But now see Hayes, the only one remaining in the end. Orthros will be the last man standing and the ace of the game. And this might just be game. There's no more Nexus threat. Mineski still has Jun and Ka Kaiko pushing this Nexus. Yung third ni Exo at the back line, TNC yeah. just collapsed under it. And I think, what a grand finish to our finals. Congratulations to Mineski. They will be the ones to represent us in the GPL. Yeah, and congratulations to Mineski. They are the ones who, as you said, gonna represent us in the GPL, in the international scene. And I'm really excited to see this team go against the other Southeast Asian regions. But as for TNC, they made it this far. What a great split they had during yeah. the spring split. The performance has been shown here in the finals and they fought till their hearts, I mean, gave it their heart. Yeah. But for Minaski, one of the best teams in PGS, congratulations for winning the finals of the 2018 Bacchus Pro Gaming Series Spring Split. Yeah, and I'm actually really glad as well for TNC that hindi lang sila, um, they, they really went for it and they really um they really poured their hearts out and nilabas nila lahat ng any other trick in their sleeve and during that game three i really really thought that tnc was gonna get that i thought so too but in the end for Minaski, they would just shut down the hopes and try to learn from the mistakes readjust and secure our third game this will be the conclusion of our finals of the 2018 back as pro gaming series but before that we have our mvp yeah. i gotta say see Gary, what a great play there by Gary. Not to mention, it was also the fact that when it come to when it came to the fact zoning at the members with the Caitlyn, zoning the now with the traps, very smooth. Yeah, and also talagang icing on the cake. He even got a pentacle on the final game of the PGS and on the finals, which really tilted the game into their favor. And yeah, congratulations to Gary. But now, uh, I keep saying that, but, but but right now, Crazy Apple, what's the next step here? What's the next journey? It will be the Garena Premier League. So I think for the summers out there, abangan nyo sa mga news natin sa Facebook page, Garena Pro Gaming Series, PH. Na, kung hindi ka nyo nag-like, mag-like nyo, share nyo, yeah. at abangan nyo mga news natin galing sa GPL. But for now, ako po si Vulcan, kasama ko si Crazy Apple. We'll be signing up for now and see you at the GPL. For the second time, look at the three-man solo player stun! DG tries to sew things out. First, with the dragon form, goes away from the fight. Prison gets blocked by Orsos. The heal won't save him and divides and straight into the trap. No, Mirimu manages to dodge it with the Fenner Sword, but in the end. Five the birds comes from. Yep, they will just go for it. They will let the extra come into play. Look at the divide. Immediately, Sony got the four members of TNT. They're clumped up. They're at the front side. And you see all Gary pulling out those traps to stop their engage. Goes to Hayes, goes here for the flash. Gets the kill onto Exo with the ultimate there. And that's the trap being placed in again. He's going to the members out. See, Caroline, look at the huge CC loss. Cannot do anything. Burst is trying to do something here with Orthros. But in the end, that was a pickup that Mineski needed to start the Barret. And right now, see Gary oh. with... Oh, Ooh. snap! Did you see the maximum range knockup coming from the Forge Gun by Kaigo? Wow, God. Yeah, comes down to this. 
Panzer attack with a beautiful engage. The present does not connect to any members of PNC. They are at an advantage here. They will be the ones to go in and bring the pain to Mineske. Wow, that was a the great game from the fog of war. Again with the Antic, with the pickup there. Look at the members getting shredded by the Zaya. Mermo is there, but in the end, it will be Caroline with the slow. With the start, we engage now on to Exo. There is the divide. Exo is forced to Final use his flash. And now... First, we think the Shanna goes away, but here it comes, another engage in the red side. Look at Hayes going for black with the ribbon ultimate. Oh, did you see the four man stun? Did you see the damage done by Caroline? He's focusing on Gary. Will the stun connect? It doesn't, but he doesn't care. He has a lot of damage on his array as well. But in the end, Gary manages to get away from that fight. And now see Hayes. There's gonna hang up on Jesse Gary. Oh, the Baron. And they fell for the trap. That will be burst going away. But in the end, Mineski with the Baron bump in their hands. Will they take away surviving here? But Caroline with their insult. Ooh. The mind games really Squadra. went to TNC. This is a wrap up. This is going to be the Pentagon. Whoa, guy right oh, there just popped. In the back of Jana, Zonga and Murmur with the size of Pedestrian. Without any more escape, they need to fight here. Look at the members of TNC collapsing there. Force got. Oh, everyone is clumped up. This is very dangerous for Minasti. They have to run for the hills. But will Murmur let that happen? Now we are seeing the ace! Thinking that wow, Minaski, why are they going to be able to win? Because they lost two fights in a row, but they're still going for this inhibitor. So we're going to see Orthros with us and engage again. The action that divide, do the Emperor's divide. Look the TNC will be again mowing them down. You're seeing that the Guardian is being prompted, but under the tower, they're not Gary. respecting the tower. But now we see Haze, the only one remaining in the end, Orthros. Will be the last As man Jordan standing. And Kaiko pushing this Nexus. The third EXO at the back line. Yeah. TNT just collapsed under it. And I think what a grand finish to our finals. Congratulations to Vineski. They will be the ones to represent us in the GPM. Yeah, and congratulations to Vineski. They are the ones who 